Welcome to Kangaroo Point, this fascinating phallic-shaped suburb that thrusts into the Brisbane River is jam-packed full of history. I'm going to go take a look at as much of it as I can. About 230 million years ago, there was a massive volcanic eruption somewhere way over on the north side. It might have been near Chermside, it might have been further north at around the Woodford area. It resulted in a pyroclastic flow. Now here, in the path of that eruption, there was a river valley. There was uh, like a U-shaped valley here. The pyroclastic flow came raging through here, filled up this, uh, this river valley with this very hard rock, which is now called Brisbane Tooth. Over millions of years, the river valley sides all eroded away, leaving the hard rock here which now forms today's Kangaroo Point. Now, the first Europeans to see Kangaroo Point were Pamphlet, Parsons and Finnegan. They had been shipwrecked out on Morton Island and they were making their way, trying to get around the Brisbane River to keep going north. They thought they were south of Sydney, so they were trying to go north to Sydney, but it turns out they were up here. They ended up on Bribey Island. Now, the next European to see Kangaroo Point was John Oxley. He was a surveyor and explorer tasked with finding the location for a new penal settlement. He sailed down the Brisbane River and described this area here, Kangaroo Point, as being a jungle fringed with mangroves with the higher land, open forest covered with grass. We also know in this area here where I'm standing, there was very heavy wattle scrub. The Moreton Bay Penal Settlement began in 1825. The following year, in 1826, Commandant Patrick Logan initiated quarrying work here and the work continued pretty much continuously for over a century. The earliest buildings in Brisbane were made from rock cut from this quarry, notably the windmill and also the commissariat store. Now Main Street itself through Kangaroo Point is one of the oldest roads in Brisbane. You can see on this very early map the road running right through where it is today. The first recorded use of the name Kangaroo Point was sometime in the early 1830s. It was up here at the northern end of Kangaroo Point that the first crops were planted, mainly maize and wheat. Some of those crops on occasion were raided by the indigenous people who were trying to starve out the settlement as much as they could. They raided up here at Northern Kangaroo Point from their camps down at Woolloongabba. It was in 1842 that the Moreton Bay Penal Settlement was closed and the following year in 1843 the first land sales were advertised. down at Annie and McDonald Street and round about this spot here in 1844 surveyor James Warner built the very first European house here in Kangaroo Point. The house did become a scene of great social gatherings and dances uh, in the 1840s. This house probably stood somewhere whereabouts this big tree is here now and just next to the James Warner Park there's an old slipway. I guess that's what it is. It's a hauling vessels up maybe for repair, launching them. What are you doing, man? He's all messy people. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Georgie, what is it? What is it? You gotta go for a walk, man. He wants to go that way. <laughs> Standing on the corner here of Holman Street and Main Street, just across the road there in 1844, that was the site of the Bush Inn, also known as Sutton's Hotel, the oldest inn on Kangaroo Point. Rotherham Street in 1849, this was the site of the very first church. The land was originally owned by Captain Wickham of which the Wickham Hotel and Wickham Street and Fortitude Valley are named. And Captain Wickham was a police magistrate. Now, after the separation of Queensland from New South Wales in 1859, neither Queensland nor New South Wales felt that they should pay for his pension. New South Wales' attitude was that, well, you're in Queensland now, you're the problem of the Queensland government. And the Queensland government said, 
well, you did all your work in the employ of New South Wales. So nobody wanted to pay it. In disgust, he moved to southern France and where he died. Now, I don't know exactly whereabouts on Rotherham Street the church was. I do know that it was a slab wood hut building, really. It's very, very basic. It cost 80 pounds to build. The Pineapple Hotel, named after all the pineapple farms that were in the area. It opened in 1864. St. Joseph's Primary School opened in 1870. It was founded by Mary McKillop and her, her gang. They were based here in Kangaroo Point for a while. St. Mary's Anglican Church, built 1873. I have visited this church before. I did a series of three videos about the old churches of Old Brisbane. This was featured in one of them. So if you want to see some awesome footage of me in a church, here it is right here. Just walking up the center of the church now. I've noticed that all the stonework here is very rough. It's not dressed or plastered in any way. But right ahead of me in the chancel and in the apse, it's all beautifully plastered. It's, uh, it was described to me as coming from earth to heaven. Heavens. Kind of wish I was religious. And this church really does have some very, very good real estate here. Look at this view of the city from here. It's a little obscured by some of the trees, but beautiful, gorgeous, and quite a spacious bit of land here. It's not like some narrow little block. Now, just looking for the men's room, uh, the church is just there, the St. Mary's Church. And I think the men's room is right here. Yes, it is. And look at this view. Someone's in there. Okay, see you in a minute. I was just leaving the St. Mary's Church, walking down the driveway, and I saw a sign here on the back of this um, pillar, like a gatepost. And it says, I don't know why it's facing this way. That's odd to think it would be facing out to the road. What does it say? Memory of James, James Morris? Wow, Jim Morrison. Rector's Warden of St. Mary's Church, 1924 to 1930. This archway was erected by the parishioners. I don't know why it's not facing out onto the main road. Next stop will be the Story Bridge Hotel. And it's just over there. Alrighty, the Story Bridge Hotel, it opened in 1886, but it was known originally as the Kangaroo Point Hotel. Now, when it was first built, it kind of looked like what it looks like now. It was in 1924, I think it was, I've got some notes here. Yeah, 1924, the verandas were removed. See, that's the, old, that's the 19th century design, very, very modern for its time. But you get into the 20s and they didn't really like all that fancy railing and raffia work and... Uh, uh, the ironwork. So some bright spark took all the verandas down and it ended up looking like this. And then later on, I think from the 70s or 80s onwards, the new owner found an old photograph of what the place used to look like. And so he set about a program of putting the verandas back, which was wonderful because it looks terrific today. The name of the hotel was changed in 1940 as a result of the Story Bridge itself opening. So the Kangaroo Point Hotel became the Story Bridge Hotel. And apparently the work finished in 1994 to put those verandas back.
Behind me there is the Yungabar Immigration Centre. Well, the former Immigration Centre, it opened in 1887. Families were accommodated on the top floor while single men and single women had separate dormitories on the lower floors. During World War II, it became an army hospital. And from personal experience, I can tell you that in the 1990s, it was home to the Queensland Star Trek fan club. My rehab team, mobile neurological rehabilitation. Mobile neurological rehabilitation. Wow. Door to door brain surgery. Naval stores, construction finished in 1888. In the 1880s, there was a general fear of Russian invasion down here. The fort up at Fort Lytton is also, I believe, a response to that, uh, that fear of invasion from Russia. There were more of these buildings along here. There was at least another one. This is the only one left here. And just up above, you can see like a little davit sticking out from that very large window. That was there so that they could lower torpedoes down to ground level here and then move them out to the ships in the river. Just over there I can see some old stairs. They were used to link the naval stores down here with St Mary's Church just up on the uh, on the cliffs there. The stairs have been out of use for a long time and you can't walk up them. You can see them on this old photograph here when they were in use. Round about on this spot up here at the northern tip of Kangaroo Point there used to be a company called Evans, Anderson, Phelan and Co. They made locomotives. Unfortunately, they chose to build their factory up here, which was well away from any railway lines. So they had a problem. Once they built a train, a locomotive, they had to get it from here down to the Woolloongabba rail yards. So what they would do is along Main Street, they would lay some temporary tracks and then they would shunt the locomotives from here down to Woolloongabba. This is the back of Lamb House. You can see the work going on there. Thank heavens a fire didn't accidentally rip through this before they were able to save it. I'm just down on Thornton Street and at the top of Thornton Street is an old police lockup from 1910. This is it here now. It's kind of the front entrance to an architectural firm. Now there was a police lockup here built in 1872. This is the 1910 replacement, but the doors uh, apparently on this building are the original 1872 doors. Let's have a look. Wow, look at this. Police lockup here and here. This area here in 1923 was known as the Rocklands Estate. It was advertised as having nine new spanking sites. It's pretty quiet now. The Story Bridge was open on July 6, 1940. It was designed by John Bradfield. That's why the main road over the bridge is called the Bradfield Highway. 
The bridge itself is named after John Douglas Story. He was a local lobbyist for the bridge and also a public servant. There is a Larry Story bridge at Waterford, but that's another story. In 1884, there was a little slipway built here on the east side of Kangaroo Point. In 1940, it was taken over by the Evans Deacon Company to build bigger ships, and they got the contract to build naval ships. The first one they built here actually was a what's called a fuel lighter. It carried fuel to refuel other vessels called the Rock Lee. This here is the, uh, the construction yard where the ships were built. A number of Corvette-class ships were built here as well. Here's two of them. The largest ship ever built here at Kangaroo Point was known as the Robert Miller. She was a 66,000-tonne oil tanker. And just before completion in 1974, during the floods, she slipped her moorings and drifted out into the Brisbane River. I don't think there was any damage to her. The Evans Deacon shipyards here closed two years later in 1976. The site was abandoned for a very long time and then later on became the Dockside Development, which is here now. But what is the point? Air Raid Shelter from 1942. It's just the roof that's left there now. It used to be surrounded by huge concrete uh, bricks. Now it's just the, the roof that's left there. And there's another one. This is on Bain Street. There's another one up on Wellington Road. And I'm going to go and have a look and see if I can find that one as well. And that's the Pineapple Hotel just behind me there. On Wellington Road and I can just see the other World War II bomb shelter. It's right here. The other one. On this site used to be a very beautiful house. Here's a photo of it. In 1926 a woman by the name of Dr Lillian Cooper moved here with her longtime companion Mary Bedford. Dr. Cooper was Queensland's very first doctor and surgeon. Very, very first one. She worked as a nurse in World War I and uh, eventually came here to this house and uh, settled for semi-retirement. She was also an early motorist here in Brisbane and she did all of her own car repairs. And apparently she had a tendency to swear a lot. So in honor of Dr. Lillian Cooper, She's a fucking awesome woman. Where I'm standing right now used to be the site of a TAFE building. It was constructed in 1968, pulled down in 2009, and the area where it stood is now this beautiful park here. Lovely pine trees and views and um, barbecues and um, one of those. Awesome spot, lovely. And a big sculpture down there. The quarry was finally closed in 1976. Opened in 2003, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Whatever that means. It replaced an earlier building on the site. This is what the previous one looked like. It's the, uh, the biggest one of those I've ever seen. In 
In 2010, the Clem Jones Tunnel was opened. The tunnel goes literally all the way up under Kangaroo Point, under the river, and up to the northern suburbs up at uh, Bowen Hills and uh, links onto the main roads up there. And there's also being constructed right now a new bridge across the Brisbane River from Kangaroo Point over to the CBD. Well, that's it. Thanks very much for watching this documentary about the history of Kangaroo Point. I had a great time looking around and learning so much about this place. If you like the video, please consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you again soon.